Hi, everybody. My name is Beth Mayer, and we are coming live today from San Francisco at Google Nexus conference, and I have two incredible industry leaders here today to talk a little bit about the future of healthcare. To my left, I have John Latshaw, who is coming in from Cardinal Health. He's the vice president of cloud. And I have Doug Bodwin, who is a principal and the vice chair for life sciences and healthcare. So welcome today. Thank you. We are here at, um, at the Google Next conference, as you know, an incredible acceleration of technology and we're hearing about all of the amazing innovation that's happening. Juxtaposed to the fact that there are 7,000 known diseases and only 500 known treatments. So if we kind of do the math, it'll take about a thousand years to come up with the rest of the treatments for diseases that we know today. Sounds scary. It's pretty startling, yes. isn't it? Yeah. And so, Doug, I'd love to hear a little bit your perspective around the future of healthcare. What do you see are the major innovation trends and what are you excited about? Thanks, Beth. Uh, we spend about 75% of the effort on treating those illnesses, those mm -hmm. 7,000 illnesses. Uh, and our point of view is that that is going to shift over time. That you know, we talk about the future of healthcare three innovation cycles out, mm -hmm. meaning about 20 years from now. Um, you know, innovation cycles generally last about seven years. I think we're, we're well embedded into what I would call the digitization of healthcare. Uh, but I do think that innovation is going to occur. And, and I think where we're going is a dramatic shift from the focus on sickness and treating those sicknesses mm -hmm. to using data, information to either predict disease or eliminate it altogether. That shift to wellness and the shift of 70% of our effort and resources towards uh, wellness. And when, when wellness does fail, mm -hmm. there will be sickness mm -hmm. and there will still be diseases and more diseases will come upon us. But I think that dramatic shift in terms of our focus and our effort um, towards wellness is where we're going in this 20 year time period. That's awesome. And John, I know that you're leading the cloud efforts at Cardinal Health. Yes. I read a statistic that Cardinal Health touches over 3 million patients across a distributed network. Mm -hmm. And would love to hear a little bit about how you're using technology to drive some of the innovation and speed. I think I've heard you talk about from months to days and days to minutes. How are you using technology yeah. to speed up the future of health? Really right now with what we're doing in cloud, it helps us become even more efficient delivering healthcare. Yeah. And so just leveraging Google's cloud platform uh, just helps us shrink our, our time to value with our customers and patients and allow mm -hmm. our customers to deliver healthcare more efficiently. That's exciting. How, um, how are you all thinking about security and privacy as the, the, the proliferation of data creates a tremendous opportunity mm -hmm. to help patients and to really drive the future of health. Um, what are you seeing as some of the things that you all are interested in around security and how are you thinking about dealing with that? Well, security is very important to us. Patient privacy, protecting patient records. And it's always a concern. We feel that Google's cloud is going to help us, mm -hmm. right? It's not a hindrance. A lot of people are afraid of that, but we found it to be, they're a great partner, they're leading edge on their security, and it, it's making our security stronger mm -hmm. and allows us to protect our patients better. Mm -hmm. It's a very attractive target, though, as you aggregate customer patient data in one place, it, it, you need to bolster your security and be mm -hmm. on top of it at all times. So Google, Google helps us do that. That's excellent. Yeah, I mean, I would add to that, you know, I think part of the future of health is that we as individuals will own our own data and own access to our own data and, and also grant access to our own data. Meaning if we're part of a clinical right. cluster, we're focused on wellness here, and us, you know, us as individuals granting access to uh, our information and allowing that to become available, therefore shareable, I actually do think there's going to be a, a, a shift towards mm -hmm. you know, own personal security away from institutional security. 
And I think we have to be thinking about that and be prepared for how does an individual secure their data? How do they grant access and make sure that that access is used for the purposes that you're, they're suggesting? If you have a clinical, you know, a, a clinical uh, procedure and you want that information therefore shared for the purposes of research and so forth, how do you grant that access and what's the security? I think that's still an issue we, still, we have to solve if you move to the individual. Well, I think it's an interesting time if you think about the individual, the patient, and the caregiver. There is this tremendous shift where both the, the patient and the caregiver sort of health IQ continues to rise yep. and their access to data is really going to create, I think, some pretty interesting shifts. And Doug, I know you've been thinking about future archetypes for clients in the future of health. Do you see some major trends around yeah. the archetypes? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that, you know, we use the term a lot at Deloitte, radical interoperability. Yeah. And the idea that an individual patient's data would then be combined with other data, financial data, product data, um, you know, environmental data, uh, socioeconomic data, social patterns, you know, social determinants of health, yeah. that becomes an interoperable data set that we can then apply cognitive and, and artificial intelligence on top of to be thinking about uh, both prediction and prevention mm -hmm. versus just treatment. Um, that, that concept of the data convener and who is going to own that convening role or you know, multiple roles in convening. If you think about different data sets, you know, the government data sets around, you know, research as an example, the individual hospitals data sets around, you know, actual encounter information and the electronic medical record is now all digital in many circumstances. You know, our health plans have huge amounts of data, you know, around encounters. The, the life sciences organizations have phenomenal data in, in, a, li in a lifetime way. So that role of the convener or the roles of the convener, I think is one of the major archetypes that we talk about towards this radical interoperability data. Putting the patient still and the, you know, in the center or the well person, but having this data available um, you know, to both predict and prevent you know, illnesses in the future. Absolutely. John, how is the radical interoperability changing how you're thinking about the next couple of years at Cardinal Health? It's an excellent question. <laughs> um, Do you think you'll have new customers that you're interacting with and new people that are going to be um, coming aboard your supply chain? Yes, I think uh, with what he was just mentioning, uh, we'll continue to expand our data footprint. Yeah. Um, Cardinal Health sits on top of a lot of very valuable data mm -hmm. that we're, we're monetizing now, but I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. And then also, uh, there's going to be combining of data from various data sources, and the more data you have for your ML models and your artificial intelligence, the more insights that you can get that, that a human just wouldn't be able to pick up on. Mm -hmm. So we see a, a lot of potential there. That's yeah. um, once again, you've got to secure it, mm -hmm. and uh, you've got to just devote the resources and time to, to work through it. Yeah, interesting. You say you know the insights that the human can really kind of digest and understand. Do you think the um, types of people that are going to be on your team are going to change in the future? How yes. how does this going to change your workforce? Uh, I think. Uh, it's going to change significantly that most people will need to be able to develop code, yeah. read code, yeah. be data scientists, um, much more comfortable with data and computers than today. Yeah, that personalized sort of, we use the term also personalized N of one. I think in the future as we treat disease, you know, there was, there's going to be different data sets, including genomic data sets, mm -hmm. and, you know, data sets of, you know, how your body is structured that will inform you know, and change the way care is provided. So I think gone are the days are mass produced you know, goods and services and pills and, and mass produced treatment protocols. In the future, once we know a lot more about you, what your, you know, your socioeconomic environment is, your genome type, what your determinants of health are, I think we're gonna be able to customize both a treatment program, but also a curing program wherever possible. I think the, the where, where we're heading around 
you know, disease, curing diseases or kind of eliminating, you know, CAR T therapy as a great example where we basically eliminate um, the disease in your body um, and as soon as we, as long as we detect it very early is going to be the new norm and the only way to do that is using you know, big data and information in an in a interoperable way. Absolutely. And Doug, as one of the global leaders in Deloitte, and, you know, the fact that Deloitte is a large employer, are you thinking about the team and the people that you're hiring into the firm a little differently? Are there yeah. different skills that are needed in the future of health? Yeah, I mean, I, I often think about, you know, you can turn that question around, what does the healthcare ecosystem yeah. need in a different way, and therefore, how can we be reflective as a service provider to that? And absolutely, if you start thinking about the need, as you said, for data scientists and individuals that are, are used to making decisions based on what's in their brain, that they now have cognitive tools mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence type tools to aid them both in decision making. The health Healthcare, you know, of the future is going to have that available at the individual level, at the care team level, mm -hmm. but also at the macro population level. And so we as Deloitte are going to need to be prepared in order to, to lead and convene and bring people along on this journey. Um, Deloitte has to change. Deloitte has to change to be one more nimble, to be a lot more tech and data oriented, but more importantly, be really focused on sort of the applications that can abstract that data and um, and and use it for important purposes in, a, in, a, in an important way. And we need more people that, that can do that, absolutely. John, when you think about being nimble in the future, are there, what do you think are the biggest challenges for organizations that are currently part of the existing healthcare ecosystem? So as we think about where it's gonna go, mm -hmm. what are the challenges for, for, for organizations that are already part of the, the system? Uh, I think there's two. So the first one is um, for large companies like Cardinal, they're used to doing certain things a certain way mm -hmm. and there are disruptors that are coming right, constantly, and I think the challenge is on us to adapt to that and uh, up our game to move faster. Things like cloud help us, things like artificial intelligence help us. There's also a culture change that anybody that's spent time in a hospital, it's not a nice place to be, mm -hmm. right? It's just not for a number of reasons, but we can do better. And what, as Doug said earlier, um, the shift is going to be keep people out of the hospital, right? Start very early and make it health care rather than sickness care, because that's what we do today. You don't right. you don't go to a doctor unless you're sick. Well, if we have information gathering constantly, your watch, your phone, everything, then you can spot trends years in advance, and, and the doctor can say, hey, you need a little more exercise, a little less burgers. You know, maybe you shouldn't eat this type of thing based on your heritage, you know, wherever you came from, that your, your genetics don't handle it well. So I think uh, really it's just fundamentally healthcare is going to change radically for the better, and uh, we need to all be prepared. Absolutely. Doug, what about from your perspective, as we're, uh, you know, out working with clients? Are you seeing one or two things that they're bringing forward as one of their concerns? Or what are, what's the biggest thing that's gonna keep us from really moving into this future of health where we're into the well-being? I guess I bring up two things and they're, they're at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> right. I think one of them is um, getting the behavioral change that you talked about. You know, yeah. How do you really uh, encourage people to live a healthy life? and do healthy things and you know and focus on their health um, and keeping themselves healthy now you know there's a lot of discussion about nudges and you know um, algorithms you know Deloitte's involved in a clinical trial right now um, around what what nudging algorithms could work and how do we actually get people to comply with the therapies and or comply with a healthy living environment. And I think that's one end of the, you know, end of the spectrum. And then I think the other end of the spectrum is how, what's the role of, you know, big organizations or big government or big employers that, you know, actually want to change the health of their population and how do they go about doing that in a large scale way? Um, 
you think about the underserved and, and underinsured, you know, 30, 40 million people in this country, right. you know, that don't have access to regular health care, that get their health care in the emergency room or in other places, yep. and how do we begin to shape, ch change their behavior? I think there's some, you know, I would say fairly fundamental issues, not only at the individual level and getting them to change their behavior, but who's the organizing body and organizing bodies that are going to help you know, um, improve the health status of the population um, in at large. Absolutely. And John, I know we've talked a little bit about innovation. As we think about the next couple of years, is there one or two things that you're most excited about, either personally around the technology or where you're seeing the industry go? Yeah. Um, I know it sounds very buzzwordy. Yeah. Uh, but I think that um, big data and artificial intelligence, uh, is we're just seeing the beginning of what this can accomplish and just make lives better for everyone through discovery of new drugs, better treatments, finding disease earlier. Yes. I'm excited to see where the whole technology front takes us from wearables to possibly embedded things in, you know, that just again help help find or prevent disease very early, you know, and, and really Hopefully, people you know, can avoid heart disease, cancer, you know, all the killers. But if you catch that 10 or 20 years ahead, it's very easy to treat. Mm -hmm. It's only when, uh-oh, you go and you've got a, you've got something that's very advanced. That not, there's not much medicine can do for you. I agree, and I think one of the themes that you both have brought up of is moving from sickness and illness to prediction and and really well-being. It's a pretty exciting time where we're seeing the technology and the um, scientific discoveries coming together in a way that is really going to have a big impact on people's lives. And as we get ready to wrap up, Doug, you know, what's one or two things that you're excited about in the future that you want to see come to fruition? I, I would call it convergence. Um, and that is, there is the traditional you know, ecosystem that we call life sciences and healthcare. The health plans, the, you know, the healthcare providers, as well as the um, life sciences and biotech companies. I think the convergence of that with a place like Google, yes. uh, you know, which can bring data and interoperability standards and just a different scale, also combined with what, what you were saying earlier around the retailization of healthcare. I think the big, you know, we are as consumers now geared towards a different retail model than that is involved in the healthcare setting. And I think um, retailization of healthcare and having that same customer experience that you have yeah. when you go see a retailer or other parts of the, you know, bring those learnings and those thinkings yeah. into healthcare and bringing healthcare to you versus you having to go to, go to healthcare is, I think, a dramatic shift that we're also going to see. I think that's right. And, and John, as we get, get ready to wrap up here with our viewers, um, it's a time of great opportunity and disruption. Yes. And as a leader at the helm with a very large organization, how do you prepare yourself to navigate and lead through some of these changes? Uh, constant learning. Mm -hmm. It's uh, getting to places like this and talking yeah. to people like you and, and Doug. And it, it's, it's just never ending, right? Um, and it's exciting. It energizes me and gets me out of bed every morning. To, yeah. I think life will continue to improve and healthcare is going to get better uh, and it's exciting to be part of it. Excellent. If we were to close with one word that we're thinking about for the future of health, what would it be to describe it? Wellness. Optimism. And I would say hopeful. And I think this has been an incredible conversation with two of our industry leaders about where the future of health is going, really how technology and the scientific discoveries are gonna to come together in a way that's powerful and to, to be honest, pretty radical. So thank you for folks at home that um, have tuned in. Thank you to my colleagues here. Thank you. Really incredible. So thank you for today. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you.